So I really didn't think much about my mental health, um, probably not until around age 13 uh, when I found my brother who committed suicide. Uh, it really forced me to look at it. <laughs> Um, you know, prior to that, I had a very, you know, normal childhood. I had a lot of friends, family, so I was a big swimmer. And then I came home from school one day, um, thought it was going to be a normal Tuesday afternoon, and I found my brother hanging in our garage. Um, I called the cops, tried to get him down. I went to my, the hospital with my parents, and he was pronounced dead. And, you know, that's when my life totally changed. Um, I had to, you know, revisit what my family dynamics were, what my relationship was like with myself, with my mental health, um, you know, and it was a very hard journey. Uh, finding my brother meant that I developed symptoms of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So I started having nightmares, flashbacks. I would see him dead in various places. Um, I was very emotionally tapped out. I cried all the time, I was angry all the time, I felt very isolated, I felt like no one really knew what I was going through, my parents were strangers to me, my friends had no idea what was going on. Um, but on the outside, I really just wanted my life back to normal, so I continued to do everything. I would go to school, I would, you know, interact with my friends, um, I would continue to swim. I wanted my life to just go back to normal before Marshall had passed. And I tried to outrun my mental health. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, and it continued to bubble up inside of me because it's, it was just too big to ignore. And so, I, you know, I, I scraped by for most of my high school career. I did very well academically. Um, at home, it was a nightmare. I was very angry. I was very upset. I spent a lot of time in my room by myself. And my junior year of high school, that's when it really um, crashed in on me. I had uh, my first breakup that triggered me and the symptoms of PTSD, everything that I had been out running came back much stronger. Um, and I was hospitalized for the first time. I was put on an antidepressant and I was really forced to look at my mental health. And that was the first time I said, okay, I really need to address this. I went to therapy. I was released from the hospital after a few days. I went back to my high school career. And things were okay, you know, I made it through high school and I got into a great college and I moved out of the house and I went to school. And with a new phase in my life, my mental health changed and I recognized, okay, you still have some things to work on. So I continued to go back to therapy. I made some adjustments in my social life, you know, my relationship with myself. And that's pretty much what my life has been like. Uh, I take uh, the new phases of my life and I look at my mental health and see how it's changed and grown with me and I try to adapt to it. Um, I'm no longer in therapy uh, but I see my therapist every now and then for checkups. I've learned a lot <laughs> over you know 13 years of dealing with my mental health where I can manage a lot of it on my own but I still need someone to check in on me um, and just you know make sure everything's working well. Uh, along the way, I realized how important working on your mental health was, and I really wanted to help other people with it because, you know, we didn't know that Marshall was depressed. And I think if I had known, you know, maybe it wouldn't change the course of things, but I certainly would have tried harder to help him with whatever he was dealing with. And so I realized I had this big passion and empathy for people who were dealing with their mental health because of my brother and because of myself. So I decided I want to go to grad school to become a psychiatric nurse practitioner. And that's where my attention shifted after uh, I graduated from college. I got into Boston College and I um, became a psychiatric nurse practitioner and now I see patients um, to help them manage their mental health while also you know, continuing to work on my own. I think managing your mental health is a very personal thing and therefore it differs for every person. For me in particular, because I've had so much training in it and I've, you know, been in therapy for 13 years, I have a great deal of insight on myself, you know, so I have good coping skills. I know what my triggers are. I know how to manage my emotions. A lot of the work I do right now is maintenance uh, for the day-to-day -day things that happen. So every day I try to get, you know, a good night's sleep. I, I try to move my body in some form every day. I, you know, check in with the people that are very important to me. So for me, managing my mental health is a lot of maintenance work um, and making sure everything is working smoothly. And when big things happen in my life that are stressful, I think I'm better equipped to handle them because I've already been through so many different things in my life. 
Um, you know, but of course it, my managing of it changes. So for, you know, that's my story, but everyone else may be different. Um, it really depends on what your circumstances are and what works best for you. It's come and gone in different phases of my life. Um, I think initially my biggest thing was, I am 13 years old, I want to be a 13 year old kid. I don't want to deal with the fact that I have not only a dead brother, but a brother who died from taking his own life. That was very taboo at that time. Mm -hmm. No one really talked about it. So I think that was the main reason why I avoided it because it just was so out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. very much so not what I wanted to deal with. As I've gone through different phases of my life, I recognize that, I mean, we stay in a habit because it's comfortable, it's our comfort zone. And you know, when external things force us to look at it, a lot of times it's a lot easier to keep going as is because it's just uncomfortable to make changes and it's really hard to break out of a habit. I also think with your mental health, you know, certain little things might not be great for your mental health, but it's not like they're killing you. But sure, they're changing your satisfaction in life. So, you know, not getting a good night's sleep or not working out or, you know, having a pretty strong anger response. It's not necessarily going to completely change your life, but, you know, it probably would be better to revisit it and, you know, change things up. So I think when it comes to managing my mental health and choosing to step outside of my comfort zone, I'm acknowledging that, okay, what I'm doing isn't working and I'm gonna go through a period of discomfort and I'm gonna have to work a little bit harder at this and that's not gonna always feel the greatest, but the end result is worth it. I would say support is the biggest thing. So when it comes to mental health, unfortunately there's a very big stigma around it. I think it's because we don't understand it or it's uncomfortable to talk about. And so if you are concerned about a family member's mental health, just showing up for them is the biggest thing of saying, I don't understand what you're going through or maybe I'm not going through it myself, but I wanna be there for you. You know, can I help you develop a plan? Can I help, you know, stand by your side in your darkest hours? We don't necessarily have to change the course of a person's life by saying, I'm gonna take you to therapy or I'm gonna push you to do that, or, I'm gonna push you to do that. Sometimes it's just a matter of sitting with someone in their darkest moments so that they know that they're not alone it can make all the difference because it allows them to notice, okay, I've got someone who's with me, I'm not 100% alone and maybe I don't know the answer how to figure this out, but at least I've got someone with me for right now. I wish that there was someone who knew what I was going through or someone I could relate to while I was dealing with it. You know, I have phenomenal parents and we all, you know, experienced the same tragedy. We all lost a very important person in our family, uh, but it was different. You know, my mom lost a son and my dad lost a son. I lost my brother, but I also saw my brother dead. I also tried to get my brother down and I think that that changed things and I was also 13 and I was not married, <laughs> you know? My parents had a really great partnership and so they had that person to get them through it. Mm -hmm. And they were very supportive of me and they very much so wanted to be there for me and they were. But I think as a 13 year old kid, it was very much so, no one gets me, no one is gonna understand this, I am so alone in this. You don't have flashbacks. You don't have to deal with people thinking you're weird because you have a dead brother. You know, your life as a 13 year old drastically changes with something like that because other 13 year olds don't know how to deal with it. So I think having someone, you know, whether they were older who dealt with PTSD or, you know, suicide or lost a sibling, uh, that would have been really helpful for me, but unfortunately that's not, you know, necessarily mainstream, so to speak, right. and because we don't talk about mental health. Um, so there was really no one who looked like me or understood what I was going through, and I think that that was um, a struggle for me, but, you know, looking back at it in hindsight, it, it forced me to be that person for myself. And I think that's actually a beautiful thing because I've learned how to deal with my mental health, and I don't depend on someone else to help me manage it. It's 100% me. I'd say the first step is to see a therapist. You know, even if it's not going to be a long-term commitment, seeking out a professional who can speak to you about what you're going through and just meet you where you're at, whether it's just for a session or two, just to develop some insight or a better understanding of what's going on or point you in the direction of better services, that can be a very big uh, change in your life. 
Oh, great. I'm very happy. Um, one of the beauties of sadness is you learn how to value happiness because you genuinely know what it's like to feel like there's never going to be a bright day anymore. Um, so every day I check in on my happiness and nine times out of ten I can say, oh, I'm really happy right now. My life might not be 100% you know, sunshine and roses, but because I've gone through so many different things and I know that I can get through very challenging things, you know, things just, big things don't face me as much. Um, it, they don't rock my world as much. So I'm really great right now because I know how to roll with the punches. Um, I love what I do. I love helping other people with their mental health. I love con um, connecting with other people. And I'm, I love to learn about myself and I love to see myself grow. And in the past 13 years, I've seen myself grow so much. And I'm just really excited to see how I'm gonna continue to grow.